Well, 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 good evening, everyone. Or do you say bonochi or bonsoir or buenas noches? What do you say? Well, whatever you say, it's good evening and welcome to another dynamic, life changing moment here at Footprints of Hope, Walking with Jesus online evangelistic campaign. We're broadcasting live right here in Montego Bay, Jamaica. I'm your host, Kamara Dixon, alongside. Sashlin, hey. All right, take it away. Well, we are indeed together again to just praise and worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And whether you are joining us on YouTube, Facebook, HopeBeyond.net, yes. Fame and Faith, FM in Belize, CATV, wherever you are joining us from, we just want to say welcome. Isn't it a pleasure? Isn't it a good thing to be here tonight it again? Is indeed. Of course. Yes. I am so, so elated. To be here. Can you imagine? I can imagine. After such. a rough week, we yes. are still here. Amen. Kamara, tell us, what can we expect tonight? Sure. Just like we've been experiencing all the other nights, tonight promises to be good. And we want to, you to remember this word, okay, an acronym, SPA. What so the mean? S for share and subscribe, mm -hmm. yeah. The P is for prayer. Mm -hmm. And the A is answering the call and making the appeal. So every time you see this program, Footprints of Hope, wherever in the world you are, Anguilla, Barbados, Bahamas, wherever, remember SPA. You're going to share the link to a friend. You're going to subscribe to the various platforms you're on. You're going to pray. Pray for the evangelist or family member. And A, sir, and appeal for your relatives or friends to answer. And we just want to make a quick announcement. Those of you who are viewing from Cornwall Court, yes. if you have any intention of joining us live here, we have a bus that leaves in the evenings at 6 p.m. And you can drive in and watch the program yes. on a big screen TV right around there on, on the lawn. Exactly. All right? So just bear that in mind. We have a drive through, through viewing, so you can also tap into that. Remember to send your prayer requests because they are indeed being noted. And now we are taking this moment to turn right over to our praise team who will take us through the theme song. Theme song. Of course. <laughs> yes. So we are now going over to the praise team. Ago, when you walk through the garden alone, you left even then your footprints of hope to be followed by men down the road. And a yes, they walked the path, but thought that they hopelessly fell. But you sent a savior. Four thousand years later, so many young and old now can tell of your footprints of hope, footprints of love, footprints to follow and we lost the way. Footprints of life, footprints of truth. Lord. Invite Micah Dean to come forward to do the welcome and greetings for us. Good evening. 
Good evening, my brethren from the Caribbean and Central America. I want to invite you at this time to bow your heads as we seek our maker in prayer. Let us pray. Our merciful God and Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father, this evening our hearts are rejoicing because we can come once more to give you glory and praise and honor. Today, Father, I want to thank you now for the beginning of your holy Sabbath. I thank you there, Father, for these meetings that are being held that are going throughout the world. I thank you tonight, Father, for Pastor Samuels and the clear way in which he presents your word. I pray this evening, Father, for your forgiveness for sins, for anything that any of us have done this day that is unlike you. I ask you now, dear God, to please take control of our meeting. Do for us, O oh God, what we cannot do for ourselves. Bless everyone that has any part in this program and may it all be done to your name's honor and glory. In Jesus' most holy and precious name, I pray. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It is my pleasure to welcome and greet you all on behalf of the members and administration of the Atlantic Caribbean Union, comprising of the Islands of the Sun, Sand and Sea, the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, the Cayman Islands with their pleasant tropical climate, and of course, my home, the beautiful by nature, Turks and Caicos Islands. I also welcome and greet you on behalf of our phenomenal speaker for this series, Pastor Glenn O. Samuels. Now we're all very excited that you're here with us tonight and that you're listening. And just like any other night, a blessing awaits you. Now, if you've been here and you haven't been feeling blessed, inspired, transformed, if you haven't fallen in love with the love of your life since the start of the series, then I don't think you've been listening. Or tonight may be your first night. So if it's your first night, I encourage you to come again. And if you have been joining, but you just haven't been able to listen, then I urge you to start doing so tonight because God has the power to transform your life. So with that being said, welcome to you all. Sit back, relax, don't fear the enemy's attack, because God has us on a spiritual lock. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It's now time for our praise and worship. I ask now that you may just tune your hearts heavenward as we sing praises to God. I sing praises to your name.
feature. We are at O in the acronym and O is for optimism. Yes, optimism. What is optimism? According to Very Well Mind, optimism is a mental attitude characterized by hope and confidence in success and a positive future. I want to start with this scenario. Two men in jail Serving the same time, let's say 30 years. The, one is an optimist, one is a pessimist. The pessimist will look at 30 years and he will see a modest situation in his mind and he'll say, I will never get out of here alive. The optimist will say, wow, 30 years, I can see stars. In 30 years, I will be out of prison and he will be happy for that. This other scenario, glass with water, the pessimist will look at this glass and he will say, oh, it's half empty. The optimist will look at this glass and he will say, oh, it's half full, praise the Lord. Optimism is built on hope and the trust that things will work out for the best. It is also the face of faith that brightens the life of others by helping them celebrate the silver lining in dark clouds. An optimistic outlook allows us to laugh. And the laughter is a powerful medicine, very powerful medicine. A study, the Breeze Law and Bell Lock study, they looked at over 7,000 people and discovered that the death rate for unhappy people was 57% higher than for those who are happy. Some of the benefits. One, better pain management. Two, improved immune and cardiovascular 
functions. Three, greater physical functioning. Four, helps buffer the negative effects of physical illness and is associated with better health outcomes in general. And four, resilient, right? After you conquer one challenge after the other, you will become resilient. This evening, I encourage you to develop that attitude for joy and the laughter, which will promote hope and optimism. Celebrate each day to preserve your sanity and life. Psalm 144 and verse 15 says, Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. By God's grace, let us seek to be happy, joy-filled Christians. God bless you. to all our viewers and listeners. Surely over the past two weeks we have been spiritually fed with the word of God through music and powerful preaching. The servants were free and spirit filled. We are unable to pay for the fulfillment we receive because all the messages taught or reminded us of God's love and his redeeming grace through which we can obtain eternal life. I encourage us and I remind us to give back to God with love and cheerfulness in support of this series of meetings. You can scan the QR code shown on the bottom of the screen to make your contribution of offerings for this program. In Proverbs 3.9, we are instructed or commanded, honor the Lord with your wealth. Let's pray on the offering at this time. Father, we praise your almighty name. You have blessed our nations with wealth and opportunities. Lord, you have commanded us to honor you with our wealth. And I pray that you will be honored greatly as we give to you what is already yours. Bless these cheerful givers and bless the offerings that they give. We love you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. Bolu Je Milka Je is the next song that we have for you. The meaning of the song is we should always praise God. Praise God for the life He has given to us. Let's praise God for the, the death He suffered on the cross of Calvary. So let's have a life of praise and let's sing this song. Bolu Je Milka Je. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Eternal God and our loving Heavenly Father, what a joy it is to know that we have a friend in Jesus in whom we can come with all our sins, with all our griefs, with all our burdens. Father, we thank you for the miracle of life. We thank you for the blessed opportunity that we have to come just as we are. Some of us are hurting. Some of us, oh God, are grieving. Others, oh God, have lost jobs and find themselves in difficult situations. But you are the God who says, come to me all, and I will give you rest. Oh God, May you continue to do miracles as you have done over the past few weeks. Oh God, may you continue above all things to reach deep down into our hearts and transform us and draw us, oh God, close to you. Loving God, we pray in a very special way that as we listen to your servant, Evangelist Glenn O. Samuels tonight, that, oh, Father, our hearts may be moved to submission, that, oh, God, we would lift up our thoughts beyond ourselves and see, oh, God, the path that you have for us. And, oh, Heavenly Father, as we trust you, may we find healing, may we find hope, may we find strength, and may we find courage. Oh God, somebody, somebody who is listening tonight may, may think that there is no other way out. But oh God, may they realize that Christ is the way, that Christ is the truth, that he is the life, and that he is the joy. And oh God, as we trust in you, may we then know the victory that comes only through you. So, Heavenly Father, may you, you know the different persons who have sent their petitions in the chat. Oh, God, may you answer those prayers. May you, oh, God, manifest yourself as only you can to each and every petitioner this evening. And what a joy it will be, oh, God. May we remember when you would have answered, when you would have done the miracle that we long for. May we, O oh God, remember to give you the honor, to give you the glory, and to give you the praise. Father, thank you for hearing and answering our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. His words on the throne No man can touch it Or change what it says For his garments are written in stone His word is written in stone His word is written in stone By the very finger of God who sits on my heart strong You can stand on that rock It's a firm foundation It will be here when everything's gone God said what He meant And He meant what He said And He wrote His commandments in stone Provided two tablets to write his law upon. A holy hand came down from heaven. He sent his words on the throne. 
no man can touch it or change what it said cause his commandments were written in stone his word is written in stone his word is written in stone by the very finger of God who stays on my heart strong you can stand on that He's a firm foundation, he will be here when everything's gone. God said what he meant, and he meant what he said, his mountains are written in stone. true that our fate stand on and haven't you heard you can't change god's word mankind better leave it alone i'm a living proof that the bible is true that's what i'm standing on you've come too late to tell You can stand on that rock, it's a firm foundation, it will be you when everything's gone. God said what he meant, and he meant what he said, his commandments are written in stone. His word is written in stone, his word. You can stand on that rock, it's a firm foundation, it will be here when everything's gone. God said what he meant, and he meant what he said, when he wrote his commandments in stone. God said what he meant, and he meant what Well, well, well. Now, now, I'm not a dance hall person, but I learned they say if it is just so nice, it ought to be played twice. Are you listening? So, so I'm going to ask you, allow the old man to indulge tonight. I just love that song. His word is written in stone. I, I mean, if I were behind the operating table, I'd say, hall and pull up operator. But I'll just say, play it again, sister. Do it again. His words are written in stone. with God alone. The Lord himself provided two tablets to write his law upon. A holy hand came down from heaven. He sent his word from the throne. For no man can touch it or change it. Were written in stone. His word is written in stone. His word is written in stone. By the very finger of God who sits on my heart's throne. You can stand on that rock, 
It's a firm foundation. It will be here when everything's gone. God said what He meant, and He meant what He said, and He wrote His commandments in stone. I think it's strange how folks want to change the truth that our faith stands on. And haven't you heard? You can't change God's word. Mankind better leave it alone. Now I'm a living proof that the Bible is true. And that's what I'm standing on. You've come too late to tell me. His word is written in stone. His word is written in stone. By the very finger of God, whose praise on my heart thrown. You can stand on that rock, it's a firm foundation. It will be here when everything's gone. God said what he meant, and he meant what he said, and he wrote his commandments in stone. Oh yes, his word is written in stone, his word is written in stone. By the very finger of God, who sits on my heart's throne. It's a firm foundation. It will be you when everything's gone. God said what he meant, and he meant what he said, and he wrote his commandments in stone. God said what he meant, and he meant what he said. When he wrote his well, 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 wonderful, wonderful. I, I just love the song. Well, it, they say it is the melody of praise that is the atmosphere of heaven. Good evening, everyone. I welcome you from the east and the west, the north and the south. And I, I know I'm getting in trouble. But there are so many screens on the outside of so many places. And every night I call some and I miss some and I get, I get told out. I get, I get uh, stuff to say, you didn't call us. And so one of the ones I, I had forgotten to call is Sunderland. Sunderland, and uh, then I want to go down to Grange Hill and Sandstone and Alma and Jerusalem Heights. And I, oh, I learned, I, I, I had wonderful news from, from Greenvale uh, uh, and some other places. A gentleman called me, you know, God is so amazing. I, 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 if I sound excited, it's only because I am excited. Huh? The devil is giving me a warm time, but the, God gives you enough excitement to keep you rejoicing in the midst of all of the trouble. And the gentleman said, Pastor, I, I am not a member of your church, but I've been listening and I want to be baptized. What, what do I have to do? What do I have to do? Why, why do I have to wait? Oh, beloved. And, and he, he, he knows his Bible. He said, well, well what, isn't it true that a man was, was, was talking to Philip and the man said, here is water? Uh, if the man said, what doth hinder him? Well, pastor, what doth hinder me? Well, I want to say to you, if God moves on your heart, there is no better time than right now. Are you listening to me? And tomorrow is going to be a fantastic baptism. There are some folk, there are some folk, and I, I understand where you're at. Just like you look on a ripe Julie mango tree, you'll see ripe Julie mangoes, you'll see fit Julie mangoes, you'll see young Julie mangoes. And we don't pick the young mangoes. We allow the young mangoes to stay until they are mature. So it is with, with our relationship with God. When the Holy Ghost moves on our heart, sometimes, you know, he finds us when we are close to being ripe and he finds some of us when we are just in the blossom stage let the holy ghost lead you there's one thing that's important keep your mind open to the leading of god's holy spirit are you listening to me 
Oh, beloved, I'm just thankful to God that there are people all over the world, across the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands and Grenada and Trinidad and Tobago and St. Lucia and Dominica and the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico and Canada and the U.S. And as I mentioned the U.S., I got calls from New Jersey and Connecticut and, and, and from New York City. I bless the name of the Lord and I just get us, there's a big screen in Claremont, St. Anne, a big shout out to the folk in Claremont, St. Anne. I, a big screen in, in the Berry Islands, a big screen someplace in Nassau, a big screen in all over the place. Oh, I thank God for what he's doing. Would you say amen? You know, I, I, my wife is going to kill me now. I am married to an Indian, but I've never heard her sing a solo by herself, huh? Uh, I am married to an Indian, and I've never heard my Indian girls uh, and their mother sing a song. But tonight, I watched a, a wonderful song by, by uh, my Indian sisters. And I say, I, I, I was enjoying it. I was trying to learn the Indian language, you know. I was enjoying it. You're going to have to sing again. For Where did they come from? Trinidad? So, so you've got an Indian group. The South Asia Mission. Well, on the wings of Zoom, I'm going back to South Asia. Or you're going to bring South Asia back to us. Wonderful. It's good to hear you. My wife's grandfather came straight from India. So, so, so I, I got to learn some Indian stuff. But we've been married so long that the Indian girls start looking like the nigger man. Are you listening to me? Well, that's the power of the nigger man's dream. I'm going to behave myself tonight. Uh, but I, 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 I love, I, I love curry chickpeas i love i love dal and bath i love rice and curry stuff are you listening to me uh and there's somebody here with a camera who's married to an indian but i'm gonna leave her story out of the business it's wonderful to have a uh, friends from South Asia and from Trinidad and from Tobago and uh, from Jamaica of the Indian and Chinese descent Oh, it's wonderful to know that God loves all people but it's time for us to testify of the goodness of God has God been good to you today well you ought to type that in the chat he's been good to me and now they're gonna be testifying of the goodness of God In the name of Jesus, we come tonight filled with thanksgiving and praise and adoration. Our hearts are bubbling over with gratitude. The old devil has been busy with us. Some of us have had tears this week. Some of us have had health scares. Some of us have had trying and troubling issues. But God, safely through another week, you have brought us you have kept us you've watched over us and i pray tonight heavenly father for all your children across the islands and the continents some have made up their minds to surrender their lives to you some god are just joining the platform giving you thanks and praise for the marvelous word that they're hearing some tonight are coming on for the first time but oh god we thank you for everyone and we pray that your Holy Spirit 
will do what a man can do. We pray you'll make the word clear. We pray, God, you'll bless us with receptive hearts, retentive memory, and a willing mind to trust and obey. Now I pray, Father in heaven, for that man who asked me for special prayer, and there be many like him. There may be many like him, hearing for the first time, his heart is moved, and God is making his mind up to follow you all the way in baptism. We pray that you would continue to allow him to open his mind so that he may continue to be taught, continue to learn that his walk with you may grow stronger each day. Heal those who need healing tonight. I pray God for those in Greenvale and for those in Waterworks and for those wherever the screens are in St. Anne, in St. James, in Hanover, in the Bahamas, in the Turks and Caicos Islands, across Trinidad and Tobago, in Barbados. Almighty God, I pray right now that you would give the wind a mighty voice. Touch this frail lump of feeble mortal clay and fulfill your word again tonight, we pray in Jesus' name and let God's children say, Amen. Amen. So on the last time we were together, we talk about L-O-M-L, -L, love of my life. And we, we, we talk about the, the struggle we have in terms of the conflict between our devotion and our vocation, the, the job we do and the need we have to relate to a higher power. We have this, this need to, to be prosperous, a desire to be successful. We, we have, every one of us have it, this quest for material stuff. We want to make sure our families are okay. We want to make sure, but in the midst of all of this, our hearts, our lives can survive without connection with the living God. And so we talk a little bit about Mary and how she found this love of her life that, that moved her to the point where she, she saved up one whole year's wage to buy what the song called an alabaster box, a special ointment. And she walked in the room and she, she washed his feet with her tears and dried them with her hair and, and anoint her feet and Jesus said she did this for my burial what love and the song says you don't know the cost of my praise and Mary made Jesus the love of her life the subject was the topic rather was L-O-M-L -L. the subject had to do with with making Christ the love of your life uh, that devotion to God that you wouldn't give to anybody else, this relationship with God that ought to be the guiding principle in your life, the guiding force in your life. Tonight, I'm using uh, most of the same letters, but I changed one. So on Wednesday night, we spoke about love of my life. Tonight, I want to talk about love of his life. Love of his life. I read a statement that I, it's on your screen, and it struck me, and I want to share it with you. Never make someone a priority for whom you are just an option. I'm going to read it again. Never make someone a priority when for that someone you are just an option. There are many persons who give their whole life in love. They, 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 they bank their total emotion. They bank all their love on one person and never get love in return. They, they, have, have you ever made someone your priority and just to discover you don't mean anything to that person apart from what they can get from you? Hmm? It says, never make someone a, your priority for whom you are in your love. Let, let, let me say it this way. The statement is saying, 
If you are going to make someone your number one priority, you ought to make sure you mean something to that someone. Are you listening to me? Never make someone a priority when for that person you are just another option. They'll just move on and leave you with a broken heart. Huh? I, 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 I have somebody uh, wrote me and tell me of, don't use those songs but you know songs are good social commentaries Jesus used parables and stuff that were common to people to help them understand the power of the word huh? so we're going to talk about the love of his life if I were to ask you of all the planets in our solar system which one do you think is God's priority when you look at the planets when you look at our solar system which of the planet do you think is God's priority well I love to allow the Bible to speak in Jeremiah 22 and verse 9 I get my answer what does it say look at it look at it it may be the only text in your Bible with earth being repeated three times one behind the other earth Oh, earth, earth, hear the word of the Lord. You should underline that in your Bible. Oh, earth, can I paint a picture of your mind of a holy God, the sovereign creator. He made this vast universe, but he stands now on the pinnacle of the universe. And as if he's screaming his heart of love out to a planet in rebellion, on the first night of this campaign, I said to you, gods, from Isaiah chapter 1 said, I have brought up a nourished people, but they have rebelled against me. Here is the living God, the one who made the world in six days. This is the sovereign God, the sovereign creator. Greeks call him the prime mover. He's history's prime mover. He's the prime cause of everything. He said, oh, earth, 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 here, the word of the Lord and the Bible speaks of of the written word and the living word the Bible said the written word came not by the will of man but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost the Bible also speaks to Je of Jesus as the living word you find that in st. John chapter 1 in beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and later on down in the chapter it said the word was made flesh and dwelt among us so God is calling this rebellious recalcitrant and stubborn planet a planet laden with iniquity he said hear the word of the Lord hear the written word and hear the living word now we say the earth is his priority well let me ask you down on this earth we have flowers and we have bees and we have birds and we have trees we have the fish we have the alligator we have the shark which of the creation which of these creatures do you think is the object of God's love which of all the creatures down here which one do you think is God's number one priority now before you answer me somebody said it's she pointed herself and she said she is before you answer me let, let let me say this to you god is concerned about the environment because he knows if our environment is polluted then our world can survive and you know right now we live in a toxic world the very air we breathe is polluted that's why this world as it is can't last so much longer the water is polluted the air is polluted some food polluted there's pollution everywhere all around us sometimes it's man-made we build factories and they are exuding uh, poisonous, toxic substances. We sometimes pour the stuff out in the water system. And so folks sometimes can't even find good drinking water because there's pollution everywhere. God is concerned about our environment. But beloved, in the midst of all of this, I am happy, ladies and gentlemen, just to tell you, 
that humankind, mankind, is God's priority. Why do I say that? Where do I find that? Psalms 8 and verse 4. The text says, What is man that thou art mindful of him? What a, what a statement. What is man that he occupies your mind, God? What is man that you are mindful of him? Can I tell you something? My great-grandmother died at 99 years old. I would love, I always love to run my hand. She had long flowing silver hair. Her body was showing signs of age now, losing its nice contours and stuff. But I love grandma anyhow. Are you listening to me? And I'd run home, every now and busy though I am. I'd get home sometimes, minutes to 11. I'd wake her up. I said, girl, are you okay? I'll run my hand through her silver hair. One day I went and she said, boy, I don't have long left here, but I've got you on my mind. I've got you on my mind. Didn't know quite what that meant. Until after she died, I discover the little piece of land has my name on it. Are you listening to me? She wrote a note. So when she said, boy, I have you on my mind. I didn't know what she was doing, but she placed me on the wheel. Can I tell you, God has you on his will. And the will was signed with a red ink called the blood of Jesus written Ah, I don't want to get ahead of myself tonight. What is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? The next verse said, for you made him a little lower than the angels. C -c Can you understand this? I've never seen an angel, but I read the Bible. And one night, one angel one angel wiped out 185,000 Syrian soldiers. One angel. And here the Bible said, God, when you made man, you made him a little lower than the angel. You crown him with glory and honor. You made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. All the sheep, all the oxen, all the fish, all the beasts of the field and the birds and the fowls. Are you listening to me? This is what the word of God says. That God made mankind his number one priority of all the things down here. And you want to understand, beloved? You go to the creation week and you find that in clear language. God, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth the sea and all that in them is he made everything and I wish I had time to walk you through that And the, but there's a recurring phrase with a particular Hebrew word which is only used to mean a 24 hour period and the evening and the morning were the first day and the Bible said let the earth bring forth he said let there be light and the sun appeared he called the stars into existence. He said, let the waters bring forth. But now he got down to day number six. What day? Day number six. He got down to day number six. I want to go to Genesis chapter one. I, I have to read this for, for my, I want to read it from my own Bible. Now, the guys can follow me in the screen, but, but, but I'm reading from my own Bible. Are you listening to me? Genesis chapter one. And the Bible said, and God said, verse 26, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Now, now, now pause for the cause. Genesis 1, 26, and God said, let us make man in our own likeness. The Hebrew uses a plural name for God. Right here, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. In unison, he could have said, let man appear. Just like he said, let the plants appear. He said, let there be light and this powerful sun. So powerful that if you get too close to it, it'll, it will liquidate you. Are you listening to me? But God, though he called the sun into existence, when it came to his number one priority, he scooped down in his divine power. He 
make this mound of clay. He formed the hands. He formed the head. He formed the feet. And then God bent over and in mouth to mouth divine resuscitation. The Bible said he breathed into man the breath of life. And man became. Man became. I said man became a living being. This awesome God who could have said let there be man but to prove to you that you are his number one priority he called Pluto and Mars and Saturn and Jupiter he called billions of galaxies that the Kobe telescope when, when it goes up in space in 1999 it says that the universe has a definite beginning it blew the mind of man yet this awesome God did not say let there be man but he formed man with his own hand from the dust of the ground breathed in his nostrils the breath of life and man became you are God's priority sometimes you may be struggling to make ends meet but you are God's priority are you listening to me you are God's priority let us make man in our own likeness in our own image I don't want to make him like the monkey or the donkey I don't want to make him like the birds or the bees I want to make him with a mind to think I want to give him intelligence I want to put in him so that so that when God was true and he brought the animals to Adam to see what Adam would call them because the mind of Adam was wired to the mind of God the Bible said the same names that God had in mind or the same names that Adam gave I'm glad tonight that the Bible gives us a picture of what man looked like before sin came in God made mankind and before sin came man behaved like his creator he thought like the creator God placed in you and even though sin has come we are told by science that the wisest of us have not used more than just 10 percent of the capacity of our brain power awesome God sovereign creator when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me in creation he's my creator and when sin messes me up down from his glory the ever living story my God my Savior came and Jesus was his name born in a manger because you are his priority you're his priority now, now to help you understand how important you are to God. I told you earlier, God has a concern for the universe. And the Bible, in the first chapter, gives us the rhythm of creation. Have you ever wondered why it is that no matter where around the world you live, the day has 24 hours? Have you ever wondered that no matter where around the world you live, the week has seven days. Have you ever wondered that down through millenniums of history, black man, white man, Indian, Jew, we have seven days to our week. God sets the boundary of time. And so you get a Genesis 2 and verse 1. He comes now to the end of the stuff he's making, but he would make one other thing. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, we're going to go verse 2, and on the seventh day, God ended his work. It means by the seventh day had come, he had ended all his work. Now, now here's something mysterious. And the Bible said, and he rested. Do you think that God was tired? God can't be tired. Huh? He can't be. He's divine. He's got life unborrowed and underived. Huh? The Bible said he rested. The Bible said, number two, he blessed. He sanctified. Then he said he blessed the seventh day. Now, I want to pause and, and, and ask you to walk with me. Number one, you're agreeing with me that he can't be tired. 
So if he rested, it must therefore be that he was setting an example for the world to follow. He rested on the seventh day. Uh, uh, the Bible said also he sanctified it. Now a non-deep understanding of the word sanctify means to make it special, to set it off, to mark it off for a unique purpose. Mm? And then the Bible said he, he blessed it. Now only God can bless. And what God bless? I, I heard somebody said, who, who, whom God bless? No man can curse, huh? When God bless you, you you're blessed. So, so, so here it is now. I told you in the first week of our sojourn in footprints that the devil had another name. He was the light bearer. That's what the name Lucifer meant. I told you in the first week of our togetherness that the devil wanted to be like God. He wanted the place of God. He wanted to be worshipped. I told you earlier in this week that God is sending one last message to earth in these last days and it's called the everlasting gospel. I told you that the first message in that gospel says, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. Then the text says, worship him who made the heavens and the earth. Now right here, right here, you find the significant difference between the true God and the rest. The true God is the one who made the world in six days. The true God is the sovereign creator. The true God is the one who made Adam and Eve in his own likeness. The true God is the one who blessed the seventh day. He calls it the Sabbath day. Are you listening to me? Now, now here's something that, that you ought not to miss. The Sabbath is not a conflict over a day. The Sabbath is God's establishment of a memorial of his creatorship. It's a sign, a symbol of loyalty, of allegiance to God. So he set it aside and the Bible said by the time he finished, everything was done. He didn't make the Sabbath out of stone. He didn't make it out of a planet because to keep it, it means I would have to fly to that planet. But he made it out of something that the Indians have and the Negro man has and the black man have and the white man has and the tall man like me have it and the short one like you have the same thing. He made it out of T-I-M-E. He gives all of us the same 24 hours to our day. He gives all of us the same seven days to our week. Are you listening to me? And so he, he blessed this Sabbath day and he made it holy. The devil tried to obliterate that. So somebody said, but pastor, I've heard that the Sabbath is for Jews. They, they were God's people, but the Sabbath is for Jews. Can I talk with you? The first Jew was Abraham. Abraham was born... 2,500 years after God made the Sabbath. 2,500 years after God made the Sabbath. Now, there are 52 weeks in each year. You want to know how many Sabbaths the world had before the first Jew came? 52 times 2,500 is 130,000. So the earth had 130,000 Sabbath before the first Jew came. The Bible said the Sabbath was made for M-A-N. Black man, white man, tall man, short man. 
The Sabbath was made for M-A-N. Canadian man? European man? Jamaican man? Chinese man? The Sabbath was made for M-A-N. Because M-A-N is God's priority. The Sabbath was made for M-A-N and that's why God is calling to M-A-N Hear ye the written word and the living word. Are you listening to me? Now I want to run. I have some stuff to share with you from the screen. I may not get to all of it, but, but I, I think I want to go there so that we can at least get some stuff together. I'm going to run fast so as soon as they can get me hooked up, I will be ready to run. But, but so while they are getting me hooked up on that, the Bible declares, uh, holy, holy, this is the last book, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. David said, if I take the wings of the morning and fly to the uttermost part of the earth, even there I'll find you. He was he is, and he is to come, past, present, and future. And that's why you don't have to worry about your past. Because God knows that. When he calls you, if you give God your today, he will take care of all of your tomorrow. Are you listening to me? When you confess your sins to God, when you surrender your life to God, He cleanses, He forgives all your transgression, He covers you in His own righteousness, and He sanctifies you. That word means He is giving you power, He is setting you aside, He is holding you up, He is guiding your life. Are you listening to me? And bless the Lord God. Someday the silver cord will break. Someday the earth as it is will not last forever. Someday there'll be no sickness, no shame, no sin. Someday the sky shall roll asunder. Someday he that shall come will come. Text says, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. You are worthy, O oh Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Why? You are worthy to receive glory and honor and power. Why? For you created all things. Are you listening to me? And by your will, they exist and were created. This is the difference between the true God and all the rest. The true God is sovereign creator. And the, the, the true God knows that the devil always want to be God. Why, what did Satan say to Jesus? He said, if you are the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. He said, if you worship me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world. And Jesus said, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. God knows that the devil is always trying to, to replace him, God. Now, but understand, beloved, that God has made you his priority. And therefore, you ought to make God your priority. Are you listening to me? He's made you his number one priority. It is because of him. It is by him. It is through him. It is by him all things were created. Are you listening to me? And down in the last book, him who lives forever and ever, who created from Genesis to Revelation. The Bible is underlining this truth that God is sovereign creator. You know why it's important? All of us, we're looking for prosperity. We're looking for peace of mind. We're looking, we want to be comfortable in this life. We want a place where we can be okay. But some, every now and then, circumstances reduces our life to nothing. I want to tell you, if the devil, even if it is with your complicity, reduce your life to nothing, the best place to be is in the hands of the God who made the world from nothing. Oh, I, 
I hear a song that says, Something beautiful, something good, all my confusion, he understood. All I had to offer him was brokenness and sin, but he made something beautiful of my life. You want to say amen? This sovereign God can make something beautiful of your life. No matter what sin has done to you, broken up, messed up, the best place to be. And tonight, if you hear the voice of God, surrender your life to the sovereign creator. The Bible said he lives forever and ever. And I want to run past this. You know about Darwin stuff. I won't go there tonight. But here's what I started with last week. The everlasting gospel. The everlasting gospel. It goes way back to the creation. It goes back to this God who made man in his likeness. And though sin is threatening to deface and erase the image of God, God sent Jesus, he sent his son to recreate us by redemption. Are you listening to me? And he asked us to worship him who made the heavens and the earth. I'm running fast tonight. Let us make man. I went to that. God made mankind and he finished all his creation and he blessed the seventh day. He made it the Sabbath day. And I'm running to something to tell you now. The devil doesn't want us to have a relationship with God. The seventh day was blessed by God. Sanctified by God. He rested on it. He made it sanctified. And when he's leading Israel out of Egypt, 400 plus years, working hard, morning till night, Pharaoh made them slave after Joseph died. But Joseph died with a hope. Joseph said to his brothers, you're going to be enslaved, but the Lord God will visit you. And when God visits you, don't leave my bones down here. Carry my bones up with you. What a living faith. He said, I'm going to die. You're going to be here for a long time, but don't worry, God shall visit you. He's leading them out of Egypt leading them and they got into the wilderness they never had any water listen to me carefully the only God who can bring water from a dry rock is the sovereign creator and sometimes your life circumstances may seem like a dried up rock I don't know who I'm talking with right now you may be a young lady a single mother a single father maybe you've been left for dead maybe you're struggling maybe your circumstances is like a dried up rock but God can bring water from your dried up rock if you'll trust him he's that kind of a God and so he, he's leading them, brought them water, and he got to Mount Sinai. And the first thing that God did, this was a new nation. Every nation has what is called a constitution. And God gave this new nation a constitution called the Ten Commandments. The first four tells us how to relate to the Lord God. You should have no other God before him. You shouldn't take his name in vain. Are you listening to me? You shouldn't make unto yourself any graven images. And the fourth one is, is one about relationship. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. You know, it's funny. The only one of the Ten Commandments that begins with the word remember is the one the world has chosen to forget. God knew our environment would be polluted. God knew our world would be messed up. God knew that there'll be the devil and, and materialism trying to replace him in our minds. And he said, listen, as long as you keep the seventh day Sabbath, you will forever remember that I am creator, that I am in charge. That's why the Sabbath is important to God and important to you. And somebody said, Pastor, Pastor, it's just a day. Why are you making a fuss over a day? Well, you fuss when your wife failed to remember your birthday. Your wife has a problem when you don't remember her birthday. Your children have a problem when you forget their birthday. And you have a problem when your children forget your birthday. Well, if your birthday 
if a day is important to you, why not the one that God blessed and sanctified? Hmm? Even in this country, there's a, what, what is it, August 17? Who, 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 who does that day celebrate? Hmm? Well, 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 what does July, what does August 6th celebrate? Come on, you fail your civic class. And if I ask you about July 4, you're going to tell me it's the independence of the USA. And you don't know your own independence day, huh? Hmm? And, and for the people in St. Anne, huh? Hmm? The day to, to commemorate whose birth? We'll share the shelter. Ah, are, you, are you listening? Listen to me carefully. He, he, that, in, in the U.S., I love Martin Luther King Jr. Nonviolent proponent. And they fought to have a day set aside to commemorate his life. Well, God bless the seventh day to commemorate his sovereign power, his sovereign creatorship. Are you listening to me? Countries around the world have their independence day to commemorate their liberation from whichever country they were liberated from. Well, God says, listen, the seventh day Sabbath is a sign of, of my creatorship. It's a sign of my relationship between myself and my children. And so, beloved, he told Israel, I'll go feed you while you're in the wilderness. He said, every day I'm going to rain down for you bread from heaven. Gather enough for each day. If you gather more than enough, it's going to breed worms. It's going to stink. And they went out sometimes and gathered more than enough. And the stench was high. But God says, on the day before the Sabbath, I'm going to give you twice as much so that you won't go out there on the Sabbath day to gather any. And the Bible said they gathered twice as much and God preserved it. And so for Israel, the day before the Sabbath became known as the preparation day. That phrase came up in their journey through the wilderness. God taught them that every day before the Sabbath, they ought to prepare their stuff. They ought to bake their stuff. Are you listening to me? The Bible said... Exodus 16, 26, six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath day, there will be none. God says, I won't rain down any. I want to teach you how sacred the Sabbath is. I want to teach you how special the Sabbath is. I want to teach you that you want to lay aside your cares and have communion with me. Oh, beloved, our world is filled with stress and tension and problems because we work every day some of us but God says I'm putting a break in the cycle uh, one two three four five six rest and on the seventh day a day you put aside your tools and your regular stuff to have fellowship and communion with the Lord God are you listening to me but they wouldn't listen and some went out there together they didn't find any and God said to them in verse 28 how long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws he said in Isaiah everyone who keeps the Sabbath from defiling it I'll bring them to my holy mountain and make them joyful watch this for in my house of prayer for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations now watch this, watch this. God says, if you keep my Sabbath from defiling it, I'll bring you to my house. Who, Lord? All nations. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. It means, therefore, as far as God is concerned, the seventh day Sabbath is for all nations. Oh, you ought to thank God tonight. Can I pause? Can I pause? I know sometime, beloved, maybe I should tell you, maybe I should tell you, I was never born as an Adventist. Well, nobody was anyway. I was brought up as a Methodist. All of my background and my family, my relatives, Methodist, Anglicans, and Baptists. Now, when I preach this, God does not send truth to condemn anybody. God does not send the Bible to embarrass anybody. And I'm not preaching this way to embarrass anybody. God wants us to come to him who is the sovereign creator. 
He wants to make us whole. He wants to bring us back into that relationship that Adam and Eve were in before sin entered. He wants our lives to be wholesome and meaningful and purposeful. Are you listening to me? Let me run fast. My time is running. So he said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. I, I, I used to live up in, I, I would say with my grandfather sometimes, it, it's an old story I love to tell. My grandfather lived in a long lane and so the shop, the country shop was way down at the end of the lane and I could tell what my neighbor up the road from me was going to have for dinner because the little boy who was going to the shop, he, we never had money to buy stuff like you rich folk, you know, so you buy your stuff for the whole month, you buy your grocery for the whole week, we, we'd go buy stuff only for that day or maybe two days, but I could tell every evening what the neighbor up the road was going to have for dinner. Because the little boy is running past my grandfather's house and he's singing, two pounds of flour, one pound of salt fish, remember the salt fish. And he'd sing that from his house all the way down to the store. And the next evening, he'll be singing something else, huh? And so we could tell. Now God says, remember. Remember the day that I blessed. Remember the Sabbath day. It's not a conflict for God. It, it, it has meaning and purpose. Are you listening to me? So let me run fast. I, I have a lot to cover. He said six days we shall labor. But let me run. I need to get down to something. I, I'm sorry to run, but let me, let me run. In the Ten Commandments, the Sabbath is the only one who tells us, that tells us who the true God is. I told you the first four talks to us about our relationship with God. And the other six, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods, thou, thou shalt not tell lies. Hmm? All of these ten were intended by God for us to have a wonderful relationship. But I'm running very fast. I need to get down to the New Testament. Somebody said, somebody said, Pastor, don't you know that Yes, I, I agree with you, Pastor, but that was for the Old Testament. Luke 4 and verse 16. Remember I told you Jesus came as the living word? He came as the consummate, obedient person. He said in Matthew chapter 5, 17 and onwards, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I came not to do that, but to fulfill it. Now, now Luke 4, 16 says, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and look at, look at this. And as his custom was. If you look in the English dictionary, look in Oxford, look in Colbin, look in Collins, look in any ordinary dictionary for that phrase, as his custom was, and even your dictionary will tell you, it was his regular practice to go into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. It was his regular practice. Mark 2.27, the Sabbath was made for man. For whom? Because man is God's priority. The Sabbath was made for birds and bees and animals. It was made for M-A-N. Did it say Jews? Did it say Adventists? It was made for man. English man, European man, Africa. It was made for M-A-N. And I want to tell you this. He said, if you love him, Keep his commandments. But I have four minutes and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run fast with something that's not on the screen. But I'm going to run fast with something for those four minutes. I gave it to them earlier. What does the Gospels have to say about the Sabbath? What does Matthew have to say? What does the Gospels have to say about the Sabbath? And if they can find it, well, let me find it for myself. If they can find it quickly. Beloved, listen. Listen to this. Listen to this. Matthew tells me in chapter 27, beginning at verse 62, now the next day that followed the day of the preparation. Remember I told you that phrase preparation day came up while they were traveling in the wilderness? That God would provide for them before the Sabbath. And so that day became known as the preparation day. The Bible said in verse 63, 
that, that Pilate went to, to <laughs> Joseph went to Pilate to beg for the body of Jesus. Joseph was a rich man who believed in Jesus. I'm glad that rich men believe on Jesus. I'm glad that rich men surrenders their heart to Jesus. Joseph was a multi-millionaire. Are you listening to me? He, he went to Pilate. But listen, the Pharisees also went to Pilate and they said, that deceiver said that he gonna rise again. Now, now, now uh, walk with me, son. We, we, we're running through the text fast. Well, that screen is jumping up and down, so let me go back to the Bible. The Bible said in verse 1 of chapter 28, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week. So Pilate beg for the body of Jesus. The Pharisees and the scribes who didn't believe in Jesus went to Pilate to say, seal the tomb. Mary and the others, because it was the day before the Sabbath and sun was almost set, they prepared ointment and spices. Huh? And they went home and rested on the Sabbath day according to the commandments. Matthew 28 verse 1 says, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week. One thing is clear here. I'm running. I have only a minute left. Sabbath and the first day of the week, according to this text, are two different days. From simple logic, the text says, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, they came to the sepulchre. Are you listening to me? So, he died on the day that they call the preparation day. That is the day before the Sabbath. The world called the day on which he died Good Friday. He rose the day after the Sabbath. The world called that day Easter Sunday. The Bible said he died the day before the Sabbath. The Bible said he rose the day after the Sabbath. And there's only one day that comes between crucifixion day and resurrection day. And it is called the Sabbath day or it is called S-A-T-U-R-D-A-Y. Are you listening to me? Well, that's what Matthew said. I have 60 seconds 75 seconds to run to hear what mark says what, what, what does mark say come on son quickly what does mark say well well let me run fast if they won't follow me they catch up with me mark i'm going to mark chapter 16 huh well let me read from verse 15 mark 15 verse 42 says and now when the even was come watch this watch this watch this because it was the preparation day the day before the Sabbath. Matthew says it. Mark says it. Mark says when the evening was come. Because it was the preparation day. That is the day before the Sabbath. Joseph came to beg the body of Jesus. And Pilate marveled if he were already dead. And they brought fine linen. Took him down. Verse 46. Wrapped him in clean linen. Put him in a sepulchre which was hewed out of a rock and roll a stone upon the door of the rock. They buried him. Oh, I can't pass. I know my time is gone, but I can't rush past it. Death and the grave had some conversation, they said. And, and death said, grave, if I kill Jesus, will you hold him? Grave said, if you kill him, I'll hold him. And on Friday, when Jesus said, Father, it is done into thy hands. I commend my spirit. Death had a party. I said, death. And the demons of darkness had a party. They took him down from the tomb. They wrapped him in linen. And they laid him in a borrowed grave. Are you listening to me? They placed a Roman seal on the grave. The demons of darkness came by the grave. And Friday night, death came back and said, Grave, do you still have him? And grave said, he's still here. Sabbath morning, death came back. Grave, do you still have him? He's still here. Midday service. The death came back. Grave is still here. And grave got upset. Grave said, go on and keep the Sabbath and leave me alone. But early on Sunday morning. I said early on Sunday morning. 
an angel left the courts of glory came down through the atmosphere passing all the planets he's moving so fast that somebody said what is coming down into earth's atmosphere he had to begin to back paddle and he drew break at the tomb of jesus the rocks rent the stone rolled away and up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph on his foes and he lives he lives he lives he lives i serve a risen savior hallelujah i'm done i'm done but hear the word tonight hear the word tonight i said he lives and the bible said in mark 16 and verse 1 and when the sabbath was passed very early in the morning verse 2 very early in the morning the first day of the week are you listening to me when the first day of the week comes the sabbath was just passed are you listening to me so let's reason now i know somebody said god didn't give them names sure the only one that god gave a name to was the seventh day he called it the sabbath day he calls all the other first day second day third day but mankind named the first day in honor of sun worship it became sun's day and i hold the whole world we know sunday is the first day and monday and tuesday and wednesday and thursday and friday we call good friday that's the day on which he dropped his head in the hall of his chest and died that's the day before the sabbath he rested in the tomb on the sabbath he rose from the dead on the first day and the argument is settled let this be the settlement of the argument the bible is clear that when the first day comes sabbath is already passed the bible is clear that on the crucifixion day it is the day before the sabbath oh i know tonight some may be hearing it for the first time but i tell you god does not send truth to condemn but you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free and by the grace of God I ask you put your hand in the hands of the man whose hands were nailed on the cross for you he died because you are the love of his life he died to save you because you are the love of his life I'm done but but there's something else that just jumped in my mind and I can't resist it Isaiah said from one Sabbath mm, Lord have mercy forgive me forgive me forgive me but I can't rush past I can't rush past it I can't rush past it it's the creme de la creme it, it's Isaiah said listen he, he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities Isaiah said the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed but the same Isaiah said he wouldn't end the book without giving you something to shout about he said sin will not have the last word the devil won't have the last word a polluted earth like this won't last forever I hear Isaiah said in Isaiah 66 and verse 22 for as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make the future for as the new heavens and the new earth this earth will not last forever this earth can and last forever thank God he's making a new heaven and a new earth he said he said he said it for as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me said the Lord so shall your seed and your name remain and it shall come to pass that from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me do you want to go I want to be there in a land where the air will be clean. I want to be there where there'll be no prostate cancer, no breast cancer, no cervical cancer, no, no liver cancer. I want to be there where there'll be no old age, no aches and pain, no high blood pressure. I want to be there, no violence, no hospital, no jail cell. And it shall come to pass that from one Sabbath, to another for the earth 
shall be filled with the glory of God. There'll be no devil. And the sovereign God who has made us the love of his life will say, come ye blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you. For you are the love of my life. He loves you. Do you love him? He said, if you love him, you ought to keep his commandments. I'm done. I'm done. My time is gone. And they're going to sing a song for us and we'll be home. But oh, tonight I ask you, you ought to make him the love of your life. For he has made you his number one priority. He has made you the love of his life. He has made you his number one priority. And if your life is broken, the best thing you can do is to give it to Jesus. Fill out that decision card tonight. Fill out that decision card. Hamela Siblis, Annalie Clayton, Cassandra Horton Clark, Ariel, Antoinette, Ibarra, Christine Edwards. We've gotten your prayer request. That's how I'm calling your name. I'm calling your name because you have written in the prayer request. Winsome Wilson and Jenny Huffington and Frederica Smith and Anne Ramsey, Una Richards, Maxine Finnegan. Yes, I've gotten your prayer request. Donovan Morgan and Angela Campbell and Sonia Yap and Stephen. We've gotten your prayer request. Fill out the card. Fill out that decision card tonight. Fill out that decision card tonight. He has made you his priority. You ought to make him the love of your life. He has made you his priority. That's why he made the Sabbath. So you can have fellowship. So you can have communion with him. He blessed the seventh day. He sanctified it. He's made you his priority. Given you a day for fellowship and communion with him. A day for rest. A day to lay down the cares. And focus entirely on God. I worship every day. But on the seventh day, it is dedicated, given completely for fellowship with God, for communion with God, for sharing the word of God. Yes, you know nothing until you know the love of God. I beseech you tonight, right where you are, right where you are, there's a pastor, there's an elder right there. In the Cayman Islands, in the Bahamas Islands, in Freeport, in Nassau, in the Berry Islands, in Abaco, in Trinidad and Tobago, in Trinidad, in Tobago, in Barbados, in Canada, in Toronto, in Saskatchewan, in Alberta, in New Jersey, in New York, and Massachusetts, across the U.S., in Kuwait, in Africa, make that decision. Scan that QR code. Scan on that QR code. Click on that decision link. Fill out that card. Fill out that card tonight. Make a decision. Make a decision to surrender your life to God. Make that decision to put your life in the hands of God. He said repent. Repent and be baptized. He said surrender. He loves you. He's made you his number one priority. He has made you sir. You sir. I may not be God's first voice to you. But I could be God's last voice to you. Maybe you have been hearing the call of God. 
Maybe you have been contemplating baptism for a long time. Maybe you have been contemplating surrendering. Tomorrow is going to be a baptism right in your country, right in your community. Tomorrow is going to be a baptism. And it doesn't matter what the devil has done to you. The God who made the world in six days. The God who blessed the seventh day. The God who sanctified it. This God is able to make something beautiful of your life. I'm done. I'm done. Our Father and our God. What a joy it is to know that you are sovereign creator. That you made us in your likeness after your image. God, we, we don't know what it looked like for Adam and Eve, but, but we know that because of your redemptive grace, there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwell and we'll behold you face to face tonight Lord there are people around the world there are folk right now in standing by the street corner looking at the screen there are screens now God even in a rum bar someplace there are screens in Sunderland and Berry Islands and Greenvale and Waterworks, Sandstone Al Alma, Jerusalem Heights, Grange Hill. There are screens, God, in sections of Spanish Town in Central Jamaica. There are screens in East Jamaica. There are screens in North Jamaica. There are screens in Barbados. There are screens all over the place because you're giving the wind a mighty voice. The everlasting gospel is calling us to worship the one true God who made the world. We've heard your voice tonight. We surrender our lives afresh. I pray God now for struggling people. Some are hearing it for the first time. Help them to go home tonight and read the word again for themselves. Watch over us while we sleep. Bring us back tomorrow. Tomorrow, God, is going to be a day of victory. Tomorrow is going to be a day of transformation. There's going to be baptism taking place across the different countries. Tonight, Lord, somebody is gaining the victory. Tonight, God, there's a young man right now. There's a young lady right now. Tonight, God, there's a businessman who's been resisting baptism. But now, God, hallelujah. He's saying, yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. Yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. Take us home now. For the glory of your name, bring us back in the morning to worship you in the beauty of holiness. Is our asking in Jesus' name and let God's children say, Amen. Good night, everyone. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Sleep well. God be with you. Amen. And we say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We, our souls have been watered tonight. And whoever you are, wherever in the world you are, whether you are a Jew, a Hindu, whether you're an, a Muslim, a Buddhist, whoever you are, we are God's priority. I know that you are with us tonight. Um, What's her name again, Sash? Honestly, I don't want to mispronounce her name. It is Ishel. Ishel. Pots. I hope I got it yes, right. Yes, that's it. Beautiful Ishel. That was a beautiful message tonight. What are your thoughts? It's a beautiful message. Good night, everyone. It's, so, it's a pleasure to be here with you from Belize. It was such a dynamic message, such a heartwarming message, you know, and I love when he brought in that we are the love of God's life and the sacrifice that he has made for us. But I also love the clarity in which he established God as the creator of everything, and then established the Sabbath and what the Sabbath 
that really means that it's not just a day, that it is a time that we bond a significant part of God's relationship with us. And that just fills me with so much excitement to know that God, the creator of the entire universe, has bonded himself with me, searches for me, and sets aside a day every week to meet with me. I mean, that's just, it's awesome. It's awesome. Amen. Awesome indeed. I mean, Sash, I'm still taken up by that message. Well, you know, how was it for you? We serve a risen savior. Wherever you are, if if you were listening on WGOD, we serve a risen savior. If you were listening on REM Radio, we serve a risen savior. He's in In the the world world today. today. If you were joining us on YouTube, Facebook, WCC, and Bless TV, wherever in the world you were joining us from, remember, we serve a risen savior and he was in he's in the world today and so we take this opportunity kamara to thank you all for joining us for such a blessed such a powerful such a packed message i know without a shadow of a doubt that your hearts were as blessed as mine amen indeed just a few announcements before we go just want to remind those of you who are living in cornwall courts or anywhere nearby, you can come to the conference center here each time we have the, the service. A bus leaves the church at 6 p.m. So make it a date and ensure that you're here in live and living colors. We also have another one, Sash. You want to do that one We for have us? a 24-hour prayer room on Zoom, 24-7, mm-hmm. that is. So seven days a week for 24 hours of the day and the morning prayer is from 5 a.m to 6 a.m miami time the evening prayer is from 4 a.m 4 p.m rather to 4 p.m 9 p.m and the passcode i will tell you is 878 Four six zero. I'll say that again. It's eight seven eight four six zero, and the Zoom ID is nine eight three four one five five three five three three. I'll say that again. The Zoom ID is nine eight three four one five five three five three three. You are all invited to pray with us. Amen. And so and so, it shall. It shall. Are you there with us still? Yeah, still here. Still here. All right, what are your final words before we wrap this up? You know, I just want to encourage everyone. The message might have ended tonight, but this link is still available. So if you haven't taken the opportunity to WhatsApp, Twitter it, share it on YouTube, share it on Facebook, through all your platforms, there is still time. This message is still live. It's still living, still potent. There are still people who need to hear it. So our work isn't done once you're listening, once you've been touched, take the opportunity, share the link. And of course, join us again tomorrow morning for a wonderful Sabbath worship. These Sabbath worships are so dynamic. So we look forward to seeing everyone tomorrow morning. Amen. Looking forward to seeing you too, Ichel. Yes. Of course. And so on behalf of the technical team and the five English-speaking territories in you the Inter-American it. Division, we want to say we Thank love you. you. Yes. See you tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Miami time. That's God right. bless. Bye. Bye.